When it comes to sushi, it's very easy to focus on the obvious. I mean, you can talk about the rice, and there's literally dozens of fish and vegetables, shrimp, and even egg to consider. But what about the components that almost always come with the sushi meal that are never considered? What about these little guys right here? I mean, when you search the internet, you're guaranteed to find numerous videos that mention the rice and the fish, but rarely the wasabi, and even to a lesser extent, the ginger. I mean, really, how many people know about this? When are you supposed to eat it? How are you supposed to eat it? How is it made? Very few people know the answers. Well, we are at Ku Japanese Restaurant in the western side of Houston, and with the assistance of executive chef Addison Lee, we're going to spend a little time investigating the process that makes his ginger a cut above the competition. Ku opened its doors on the west side of Houston in February of 2013. And although its address is 947 Gessner Road, it's best to know that the restaurant itself is located within the Memorial Gateway Center. Nestled in the middle of this luxurious complex, you'll easily find Ku. Now, although you might consider pickled ginger a sushi garnish, Chef Lee uses it in many ways. The ginger is very, very important to me because I've been using ginger a lot. We're using it for the kitchen, we're using it for the sushi bar, especially for Japanese sushi. You know, we're using ginger to pickle, you know. A lot of the sushi lover, they like pickled ginger. And then um, between, we're using for between the sushi sashimi course, you know, they, they can clear their palate so they can really, really tell, you know, what kind of fish they are tasting. And as you can imagine, step one is using the best ginger. And when it's ideal for the picking, it makes all the difference. The first thing, uh, the first step is very, very important because, you know, is you have to find a very, very good ingredient, good ginger in the right season. Chef Lee uses a yellow ginger, which provides a clean taste and a moderate zing of flavor from the very first bite. The ginger is thoroughly cleaned and peeled and then cut into thick matchstick sized portions. After that, it's time for an ice cold cleaning. The next step, you know, I will put all the ginger into an ice bath. So kind of soaking a little bit, I, I, will, I will say about 15 minutes to 30 minutes, you know, that we can make the, um, the ginger texture kind of crispy before we pickling it with the vinegar. We found this step surprisingly important. The cold water not only ensures that the sliced ginger is cleaned, but stiffens the texture before it moves to the next step. After bringing a pot of vinegar to a boil, the cold, crisp slivers are carefully placed into the mix. This allows the vinegar to quickly penetrate the roots while keeping the pieces firm. Then it sits for about a day to rest, soak, and absorb. But since pickled sushi ginger isn't the topic of many discussions, we asked Chef Lee a few questions to clarify some common concerns. For example, does he recommend eating the ginger with your hands or chopsticks or does it even matter? For eating the ginger, is to me, is not too important. But personally, I, I like using my hand. But I recommend that, you know, you're using chopstick or hand, pick it up. It doesn't really matter. Additionally, he doesn't recommend going gangbusters on pickled ginger. In other words, don't eat so much of it that you're adding another course to your meal. To him, several bite-sized samplings throughout your meal and between courses is best. In other words, don't eat too much at one time. And it's always best to eat the ginger between sushi courses to get a firm grasp on each portion without confusing the flavors. For example, if you've enjoyed a few pieces of tuna nigiri, cleanse your mouth with one or two pieces of ginger before moving on to the next kind of sushi. In other words, between different types of sushi, don't overdo it. If they put in too much ginger into their mouth, you know, it's kind of overpowering everything. So you won't taste any kind of fish, you know, anything. And if the flavor and texture of pickled ginger is something that you're having trouble enjoying, 
Sheffley recommends either doing your best to get used to it, or if it's really not for you, consider a fantastic alternative. I, I recommend them to try to get used to it little by little. Um, if they really, really cannot take it, you know, I would suggest they use using cucumber. They can ask the sushi bar, ask the chef, you know, give a couple slices of cucumber, you know, to um, take it instead of the ginger. That's right, cucumber. Merely ask the sushi chef or wait staff for a few slivers of raw or pickled cucumber to freshen your mouth for the next sushi course. Now you know the technique and advice from an expert. So the next time you're enjoying a meal at Ku, regardless of what you've ordered, make sure that you sample their delicious pickled ginger that's carefully made in-house for those who can appreciate the time and technique that goes into it. We at the restaurant, we have a lot of selection, good selection from Japan, uh, seasonal fish, and we're using local season, seasonal ingredients to combine everything together to uh, put in our dish. Freshness is very, very important to a restaurant, a Japanese restaurant especially, and the rice, the vinegar, the fish, you know, everything's very, very important. Um, I think Ku is the best place to pick. For ExploreSushi.com, I'm Carl Rosa.